Electro Guys. A few years ago, we stood in this very room and did one of our very first videos. How has this collection changed since that time? We we'll have a lot more Barbies now, a lot. And how many more Barbies do you mean? About 200, I think, more than the last time we took a look at them, yeah. Wow, and back then you were all about the fashion Barbies. So you still, uh, still into the fashion Barbies? Oh yes, definitely. I love them. I mean, there's always a new collaboration every year coming out with, a, with another designer, and I always have to have that doll. So it's definitely still a focus, but I've branched out into other areas too. And back then also you were really into the silk stones. I see even more silk stones now. Tell us how your silk stone collection has been going and what's the newest thing in silk stones? Well, the Barbie fashion model collection, that silk stone line went from 2000 to 2020. So it ended in 2020 and that would be the vintage face. They decided to take it in a more modern direction, like more modern clothes and a more modern face mold. Um, and do a little more like with repros and stuff like that. So I've been busy trying to collect all the ones from that time period from those 20 years. And what kind of dolls are those over those 20 years that you were missing that you're picking up? They're all fashion oriented dolls, obviously. Just ones that I must have pet it. I'm passed by them a million times and now I've decided I want them because now they're getting scarcer in the market. And uh, some of these actually look like they're lingerie dolls. Yes, the very first set of fashion model dolls that was released, I believe, or at least very close to the beginning, was the set of lingerie dolls, which had mixed reactions. It was never designed for children. It was designed for adults only. And I never really liked them until I started really getting into the silkstone specifically, and now like I have to have them. So now I'm still missing like one. Obviously, there are not 200 more dolls in this room. No. So how have you changed how you display your dolls now versus then? Well, we had to leave this room, maximize it as much as possible. My husband is a master of wall space and putting shelving up and still use the IKEA display cases, which unfortunately have discontinued during the pandemic. So now you have to get them second secondhand, more expensive. But I've left this room and had to branch out into other rooms in the house. I have about a hundred dolls in another room now and some more dolls downstairs. Well, why don't you uh, take us a little tour around your collection here, this room and the other rooms, and let's take a look and see what you got. Okay. Well, this is where the majority of my collection is. So right here in front of us is majority of these are silk stones. We have some of my favorites, all time favorites in here. We have uh, Katerina right here. These are the Russians. That's a Russian. And then these are the Italian line. Got some Mad Men down there, Joan and Betty. Then these are not silkstone, but they were so nicely done that they appear to be silkstone. These were season dolls, Halloween, Thanksgiving, um, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day. And then we have some really nice silkstones there at the bottom. And then here we start what I call the career series of silkstones. We appear on these first couple shelves. We have lots of the careers that Barbie has been throughout the years. Teachers and secretaries and fashion designers. Then over here we have some more career ones here on the top row. That's one of my favorite ones. Is now these look a little on, like on the vintage side of careers here. This is like old school stuff. Yes. I mean, these aren't astronauts and no, no beekeepers and no. This is uh, more tied into the vintage look. And these are more just fashion forward ones. These aren't careers anymore. So then up here. We start with the vintage repros. So these are all dolls that were made originally and they've reproed them in their outfits. 
How can you tell these from the original? Uh, the copyright on the doll. Um, and obviously, if you held the doll in your hand, you would know. And of course, they didn't come in boxes like this. But you have to be careful when you're out. That's, that I have seen people try to pass them off as vintage. What do we have here? These are what I call like my pop culture dolls. You know, um, just from TV, movies. Um, they made so many of them. Um, I collect the ones that I like, obviously. Mostly ones that I like their fashion. Those were some early, earlier dolls in my collection, but really nice in fashion. The Seas Candy dolls from San Francisco. That was nice. More uh, repro vintage up there. And then here we have um, an iteration of Dolls of the World. There are so many different rounds of Dolls of the World. I collect only the ones in those two that I like. Here's another, you can tell this is an, another series, another year. The boxes change, but they generally do the same over and over again. And then these are all vintage repros. Um, these ones at the end uh, were, were date ones. Got some fun stuff up here. Um, I've always liked all the uh, department store dolls. So we got Gap, there's a Benetton doll. Got some early uh, horse riding dolls up there. More Gap. Uh, Hamley's is a store in the UK. FAO Schwartz up there. Bloomingdale's, FAO Schwartz used to be big time Barbie. These are actually Avon saleswomen. The Avon made a whole line of dolls, but these are actually the, one of, like what they portrayed as the, one of the real women early on who sold Avon cosmetics. What are these little ones here? Those are Kelly and Tommy dolls, um, which I just think are adorable and they come in all kinds of themed also. And that's kind of my Christmas shelf of uh, some Kelly and Tommy Christmas and then some of my Christmas dolls that I've liked. And then this is kind of a new shelf of wedding. I got some vintage 80s uh, uh, dolls that someone handed off to me that were in good shape. So um, I added them in there. Are these Hallmark? Those, three of those are Hallmark. And I think the other one is something else. Then we got, those are actually silk stones right there. France, the Francie dolls. Those are really pretty. Down there, actually, those are Dancing with the Stars. Those came from my husband when he worked at ABC. Had those a long time. This is kind of a collection area of some Kelly's and Tommy's and some Hallmark larger ornaments. More Kelly's and, and Tommy's and Hallmark ornaments and some Barbies back there. Some early Costco Barbies. The Charlie's Angels ones are really cute. Got some newer ones here from the last like year or so. Tim Hortons is a store in Canada. Dylan's Candy, that's a, a real candy store. And that one is a Mattel doll honoring 75 years of Mattel. Those are miniature dolls like the way they originally came, but they're Hallmark ornaments. That's actually Singapore Airlines flight attendant, but she's considered a Barbie. These are repros of 80s dolls, which are really well done. I really like. They look a lot actually like the new movie dolls. These are repros up here too? No, those are not repros. Those are just a random sampling of, I would say, more Playline dolls, just military dolls up there, dolls that were only sold at PXs on military bases. Kind of interesting. Here's a cool one. There's one of the Dio uh, de los Muertos dolls. That was the very first one. I would say she is probably my second favorite in that line. This is the Benito Santos Day of the Dead exclusive doll. They made less of these. I've always loved that Hello Kitty doll. I just think she's adorable. Jonathan Alder, I love that doll. I picked that up at, at uh, National Convention one year. 
up here we have um, a variety of years of Dolls of the World. Uh, my aunt is a collector too and she um, sent me like 10 to 15 of them in a box so I have added them to my collection. Some of the early 80s ones I have quite a few of those from her and those are usually with that solid color line you can tell from the 80s. Uh, two more, the Dio de los Muertos dolls. I believe um, maybe three and four there. We got Puma and uh, Brito. thought those were really well done. John Deere, I just get a kick out of that one. Um, I just think she's so adorable. Uh, Keith Haring. That one is really interesting. It's like a laser cut, supposed to be leather dress. Um, it's the only one I bought in that series, but I just think the intricacy there is, is something. Tokidoki, it's a number one doll people ask about whenever I give it to her. Do you have Tokidoki? And that's the only one I have. I'm hoping to get some of the other ones. There's some um, more exclusive ones that are, are out there. Are those tattoos? Those are tattoos, yeah. It's really cool. Wow. Stony Clover. She's doing a Barbie cl uh, collaboration right now again with the movie coming out. These are all our, some of my fashions. We got uh, Versace and Paul Frank. I have the blue one, but they also made a red one, which is harder to get. Tooney and Burke. It's a Sports Illustrated. I have both the Juicy Couture dolls now. They're so cute. Ferrari. I mean, who can beat Ferrari with the leather? That's real Ferrari leather there. Burberry. I'm still hoping to get, that's the Japanese Burberry doll. I'm still hoping to get the American one. Of course, Lily Pulitzer, Diane von Furstenberg. And then these are some of the earlier fashion ones I started out with. We got, uh, of course, Legally Blonde. You got Avon. You got uh, Ralph Lauren and Anne Klein. A lot of these were sold at either Bloomingdale's or Macy's. That's a Macy's exclusive. Nicole Miller, Donna Karen. Those were the 90s heyday of those. Calvin Klein, the Project Runway um, doll, I have the one of those with Tim Gunn, it's really nice. What do we got going over here in the corner? There's all kinds of like little things going on over there. Um, these are, the Bay is a Canadian store, um, like kind of like Macy's, I discovered one day, so then I collected two of those. The Midge doll, the infamous Midge doll where she was pregnant. I picked that up at convention last year at a smoking price. Usually she goes for a pretty penny. Just that was something I just keep because it's kind of a uh, unique. That's one of those uh, Bay dolls again. Got some FAO Schwartz down there and Cracker Barrel. I picked those up recently at a Comic-Con. All the superhero ones. There's the 70s plane with a variety of uh, flight attendants and pilots throughout the ages. It's a pretty cool playset. There's the Heidi Klum doll. Belk is a department store. Kentucky Derby. Have there been many dolls that are actually specifically at specifically a person yes and I don't collect a lot of them that's one of the few dolls right there that actually has a Barbie face usually when they make the dolls like they just made like Gloria Stefan and they made Tina Turner they actually mold the faces of the celebrities now on them and I, I just like them to look like Barbie this is a uh, Trina Turk that's a fashion fashion doll designer doll Got a silkstone set here. They have a lot of these. I'm hoping to get more of these set ones. Here's some, that's a new silkstone set that was near the end of the whole fashion model line. I just love all the clothes in the boxes. I think it's cool. That's a, a doll that everybody loves, and I love it because of the box design, because I'm into design of the box also, the birds, all the three-dimensional birds inside. And Sinatra. Amelia Earhart. That's a doll that's really uh, gone up in value. One of the few dolls I can say has 
gone up in value. I don't know if they didn't make as many of them or what. So these are some of my oldest dolls actually out of the box. These beginning ones right here, these are all Barbie Millicent fashions. If anyone remembers these from the 90s, these were like some of the fashions that they made. And then these are probably the oldest dolls that I have were the military ones. I got those probably before I even started collecting and I used to take everything out of the box. And then some of these are out of the box uh, dolls of the world. Just ones that either had extra or I liked them out of the box. Oh, Austria is missing her shoe. But yeah, so those are, uh, those are some of the few ones I have out of the box. And then down here is where I keep all the Playline dolls. Um, these are representing all the different jobs that she has had through the years. And some of them are really fascinating. Um, you know, film director. Of course, she's been an astronaut many, many times. But she just recently was an interior designer this year. And she's been... Um, everything from pilot to flight attendant to chef to firefighter. Some of these ones down here are kind of cute. We got beekeeper, archaea, um, paleontologist. They're really, I think I have three paleontologist Barbies actually. Magician, um, I believe it's robotics engineer. They did a whole line of um, like NASA. She was a judge. They had a whole series that was Barbie of the year, career of the year. So some of them have the gold seal on them that show that what that career was that year. So this one was, I think this is film director. That was 2015. That was the career of the year. We got the Flintstones back there. Those are some of the few ones I have that don't have Barbie faces, but I was always a Flintstones fan. So, and then Grease, they did a whole line of Grease dolls. I have the one. And then Vera Wang, that was a doll. I can't tell you how many times I watched on QVC that I always wanted back in the day when you would buy them on a payment plan. <laughs> I finally got it. Same one, this, this one. This is an F.A.O. Schwartz rose doll. I think she's like roses or something. She was always one that I wanted. Those are the whole Target exclusive uh, Tommy and Kelly dolls. Those were always adorable. They had made a whole jazz series. I just have that one. The look Barbies, I definitely would like to get into those more. Those have become ultra desirable and very expensive. And I don't know what they originally sold for, but I know they were sold as Playline dolls over like at Walmart and stuff. That's an interesting one with the dog. They were, that was actually supposed to be an entire series, I think, that they were going to do with um, Barbie and a different dog. And they only ever made that one. So it must not have been a hit. So okay. here's some of my Christmas dolls. I don't have a lot of them. That's an F.A.O. Schwartz. Down here are two holiday dolls. That one I just loved. And that one on the bottom is like one of my original from 97 dolls when I first started collecting right out of college. And I just can't part with her. So up in the top row, I have some career dolls and just some fun different things. Like she was a police officer. There's some Toys R Us exclusives up there. Toys R Us doesn't exist anymore, at least not as a freestanding store. Um, some Halloween dolls. I have, I'm trying to collect all the space dolls for a time. Like I said, she's been an astronaut a thousand times. Tweety and Elmo. And I like all of the things that deal with travel. So we have up here, we have flight. We have trains, more flight. Of course she was, they did Toy Story dolls for every Toy Story she was in. And then Star Trek, which is the set you see at every single Comic-Con. <laughs> classic TV series, which I loved. They made, so these first three are Bewitched, the Beverly Hillbillies and I Dream of Jeannie, and they're in the vintage phases. If you notice, they have the vintage 60s face. Those I really like. And then they made another set of them. I think these might actually have come before they did I Dream of Jeannie and Bewitched, and that's in like the regular face of the day. And then we have some other pop culture ones. We got Curious George and Barbie and Snoopy. We have Hollis, uh, Hollywood, and that's Empress Sissy. Um, I've actually been to her palace. I have all the Hallmark dolls, if anyone remembers from, the, I believe it was the 90s. They did, uh, every year they put out um, a Hallmark doll, and they were quite pretty. 
These are Spiegel dolls. Anyone remembers back in the day, the Spiegel catalog. Those were nicely done too. We got uh, a more recent iteration, Dolls of the World. I only collected those three that I liked. And then these are the rest of all the Hallmark dolls. I have all of them. An early part of my collection that I would never part with just because they meant so much to collect. That one's actually a celebration doll for these are hallmarks. They were really, they were really nicely done in their day. Oh, and would you look at that? There's a kitty back there. Yeah, you. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> these are my Disney dolls that you would buy at the Disney park. They used to sell them there. And she obviously hit this one. For heaven's sake. I like this one especially. I've never seen this one before. It's like supposed to be like the vintage, maybe like 50s, 60s look that the Musketeers would have had. So this is my City Seasons collection, which I can remember in San Francisco, completely disassembling the FAO Schwartz display just to buy and pick out this particular doll. And then they had one for every season, but this one I remember because I lived in San Francisco and I remember going to the store. So they had one for every season. And I, at the time, these were really nicely done. And I would probably never part with these either just because I have the whole set. Yeah, let's see, I think this is Rome maybe, or summer. And this was fall, autumn. And then the next row, we have the great fashions of the 20th century, which I liked some of them, but then I decided I had to have all of them. So we have the the tens, the twenties. She's a flapper. That was a really pretty one. Nice yep. And then the thirties, very glam. The forties. I think that's probably my favorite one. That one's really nice. I got that from my mother. The fifties. And I actually have the matching little Hallmark ornament. And then down here, we continue with the sixties. The we changed the box a little by then. And the 70s. And then we have just some random ones that I just liked that I picked up. And here I have an Escada doll. And then a Monique Lelaire wedding doll. And then down here we have Marilyn, who I just couldn't leave behind one day. And little Bo Peep. And this is, um, I think Mary had a little lamb and X-Files. On the back side, we have, this is uh, one of the brand new doll this year. We, these are some Chinese New Year dolls up here. That's actually a actress in China, Fan Bingbing. Oscar de la Renta doll. The Hershey's doll actually one time smelled. No, not, I'm sorry. The Hershey's doll doesn't smell like chocolate. The chocolate doll actually has holes in it that she used to smell like chocolate. Todd Oldham doll. Let's see what we got up here. I'd never heard of this designer before, but I found it one day on eBay. Daniel Hetcher. I was like, oh. All the kids, this is the favorite doll when the kids come in here, is Build-A-Bear, Barbie. Everybody flocks to that one. These were for um, when you're having a baby. They made an iteration of these a number of years in a row. These are vintage repros that I really like. This is how they did them one year where they were more singular. The Mac Barbie. This is Pottery Barn Barbie. I wanted her for a long time. She's kind of hard to get. Got a cowgirl down there. I love these on location dolls. Again, they remind me a lot of the Silkstone dolls that come with the outfits in them. I need to get, I think there's one more in that series I need to get. Rockers, I, those are the last dolls I had as a kid was the rocker. So that's the vintage, that's a repro that I got one year for my parents for Christmas. These are originals and these are the two that I actually owned. I owned that one and I owned Diva. They're the red haired one. Those were the only two that I owned. And they did this whole line 
of these big ones where they repro um, repro and I just saw that they kept reproducing the Superstar Barbie over and over again. There's the 1964 one. We got the other Dio de los Muertos style. It's probably like my least favorite one. And that's another one of those um, commemorative ones. And then they did a series of London, Paris, and I think America where their dresses were shaped like famous uh, landmarks of the cities. And some more vintage repros. I think one of those might be a silk stone. So this is actually one of the, this is a silk stone actually. So this is also what they're using the body for, like I said before, for repros. So that's a silk stone. And then these are really nice. These aren't silk stones, but those are really uh, nice repros. That's my Kate Spade doll. I love that doll. She's gorgeous. And I can't remember who's down there. So this is some of my high-end dolls up here. We have Coach. There's Yves Saint Laurent. That's the Mondrian dress. There's, of course, Christian Dior, one of my favorites. Hello Kitty. Charlotte Olympia. That's Oscar de la Renta. And we have a Hudson Bay Company, and that's the other Yves Saint Laurent doll. They're gorgeous. All right, we're going into another room. So now we're where the Barbies have expanded in here into the bedroom. We have uh, 12 days of Christmas. They did that this year. I'm really hoping they continue to do that every year. It's really cool. It has an advent box and uh, came with all of those little accessories in it. Here is where my silk stones have expanded into. So I've started collecting like, this is Palm, the Palm Beach line. I have a couple of those. These are mostly uh, fashion ones. I'm trying to get all of them. That was the very last doll of 2020, of the entire line right there. Those are not actually silk stones over there, but they're really um, high end. I'm hoping to get the last one, and that is, is called silver, I believe. That's like gold and blush. And then we have some more silk stones over here. And then that's the Met doll right there is one of my favorite dolls. That was very limited production. I think it was like 500 dolls. And those are the two, two of what they changed the fashion model collection into, the silk stones. They call it the pink collection. So those were the, the one on the left is the first one that came out with the new face and the modern, the modern face. And then that I think is number three actually. And then during the pandemic, this is what I did was I was really into, they made fashion sets for the silk stones. So I've started buying uh, nude <laughs> silk stones that I could get. And then I bought the fashions and dressed them up and they are just really lovely. And then of course we talked about that. I started collecting um, the lingerie ones, which I love. We got some more lingerie ones down there. They actually look really neat outside the box. They do. So up there, way up high, we have some birthday dolls that they issue every year and some repro dolls. And actually that date and night doll, I just saw today, uh, Margot Robbie was wearing a reproduction of it at the Soul opening done by Versace. So I thought that was pretty neat. This is when I said I was doing accessory setups. This is a lot of this is uh, beach stuff from this year from Playline stuff and I just thought it was so cute. They did kind of an eco-friendly line and the packaging was all done in recyclables I guess and I guess some of the plastic was recycled and then I have some other dolls behind there but some few dolls that I have out of the box. And then I got got the horse finally the story with that's those are dolls from my era from the 80s. I had uh, that, everyone calls her Winky Barbie. She had a mechanism in her back and her, and her eye winks, but she got stuck over time, so most of them don't work anymore. But I never had the horse, so my mom bought it for me off of eBay because I always complained to her, why did I have all the Western dolls and no horse? And then there's some of my um, vintage 
uh, accessory stuff, a lot of uh, vinyls, scrapbooks, and record albums, and dictionaries, and cases, some more cases. And then these are some 80s dolls, original, in their boxes. That I had right there, the fluff kitty, when I was a kid. And these are all the dolls that um, I had growing up, and I have bought them, rebought them. Uh, mine all went to my sister, and she destroyed them. So now I have them all back <laughs> in their original boxes. And my car, I bought that again, and I had that moped, and I found that in its original box, and I couldn't bring myself to open it. So I have some interesting dolls over here. Um, that was a doll I didn't even know I wanted, and then when I saw it, I had to have it, Tarina Tar uh, Tarantino, she's a designer. That's the new doll from this year, the Met Gala doll. It's supposed to be after Rihanna that she wore that dress to the Met. It's an enormous box. <laughs> these are some interesting ones. These, um, I think two of these are convention only dolls. So the one, on, this one right here is a convention exclusive. I just love it's very 60s kind of empire waist. This was, uh, I believe, a convention doll. This one comes in blonde too. And then some silk stones that I've gotten recently. And then these ones were from the series that they did called the Willows Collection. That's supposed to be where Barbie, her story is from, Willows, Wisconsin. And these are supposed to be her like in high school. Like she was the homecoming queen and she went to the, you know, what was this one? She went to the soda shop. And... This is Wicked and Wizard of Oz dolls. They were really, I had the wicked ones first and then I discovered these have the vintage repro face, these Wizard of Oz ones, and they're really different. So I collected all of those. And then at the top are the brand new Barbie the movie dolls. Those are all the ones that I've, that I finally got. And they're really nicely done. Now we're downstairs. What do we have here? This is where I keep most of my vintage stuff. So we have a rare one of the lunch boxes that was Canadian right there, vinyl. And then we have a whole collection of fan club items. These are original stickers from less the 60s and original bracelets that you get. And a clock made in uh, Germany and a little um, guitar and puzzles. I mean, Sky was the limit back then in the 60s. They made... There's a story about this too, isn't there? Yes. That right there is a gift to employees. It was an employee gift. I can't remember what year it was, but I found that in an antique store. I thought it was pretty cool. So here is where I keep a selection of my vintage ones. So we have Scooter and Ken in the original uh, car that Barbie had. And then we have a brunette swirl um barbie and we have a skipper and an allen and if you go over there there's ricky who is scooter's friend oh, yeah, the top up here. here is actually from my childhood uh the mcdonald's play set i got one year for christmas i so we repurchased it off of ebay and reassembled it and now i have a greater appreciation for what my parents went through assembling all that little barbie stuff <laughs> there's a video to see how that uh, all got put back together too yes and what about this down here? Ah, uh, the boat. That's the speed boat, which I have been looking for for a long time. I got another skipper. Um, and then this is interesting on the left. So the front one right here is a number four original. This is a repro, which I just keep out here because it's interesting to see the comparison between the two. And then this is Barbie and Ken's hot rod, which came in really nice shape and have the box for this. And we got another Ken in there and Skipper in there. I have one more vehicle to get and that's the elusive plane. Here's some more of my Kens that I like. I have the roller skating Ken and the band Ken. And then this is Alan in his hunting outfit. And then in here we have uh, examples of comic books, books, storybooks, uh, wallets, uh, view masters, sing along records, um, just a little collection of all the of all the items they made. And this is my lunchbox collection, the vinyls and the one metal. Back in 2017, I asked you if you could only pick five dolls from this collection, 
which dolls those would be. Now, a few years later, let's see how they match up with the first batch. If you could only pick five dolls out of your collection now, what would those five dolls be? Well, it's funny because I tried to remember what five ones I had the last time we talked, and I honestly couldn't remember because some stay consistent. So I think Christian Dior is probably consistent from last time. That holds a very special meaning to me because my husband bought it for me. Um, is this the only doll your husband has, has bought for you? Uh, no. No. <laughs> he sounds like a generous, nice man. Yes. He is very generous, very generous, yes. Uh, I have a birthday coming up, by the way, yes. too. Yes. Um, <laughs> I know. So definitely Christian Dior. And then um, the Benito Santo style would be new. That's uh, the new Day of the Dead doll that was kind of more of an exclusive. This past year it was very hard to get. That one's uh, pretty exquisite. Katerina doll, the Russian Silkstone, still a favorite. Uh, you can't go wrong with that one. Yeah, there's three. Mm -hmm. My Moschino Met Gala doll, I love. That That was a husband purchase. Is that the one with the pink outfit? Yes, you know that? that's dressed Almost like... Almost looks uh, like leather. Or yes, like... and then that's four, right? That's four. Okay, so then five gets challenging. I guess it's going to have to be coach because I'm a coach girl. Thank you, Diana, for updating us on your amazing Barbie collection. And you should check out the first video too, so you can get kind of an idea of how this collection has changed over the years. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Check out our other great videos and always remember, surround yourself with what you love.